Hi everyone, uh, my name is Alice Rueza. I am the Africa Regional Director for WWF International and I'm here today with our Director General, Dr. Marco Lambertini. Hi everyone. Our topic for today is natural resource conservation through a gender lens. Let's start by talking about the role that women play in conservation, because women play a central role in management of natural resources. Women, by, the, by virtue of their fact that they are traditionally providers for their families, in all of these societies where they depend, where all of this depends on natural resources, it's women who are in charge. It's women who have to collect firewood, it's women who have to collect to bring water, it's women who find food for their families. But it's also women who bear the biggest brunt when these resources are degraded because now they have to walk longer distances for water and longer distances for grazing and for firewood. And, they, and yet, they also have very little decision-making power in and most of the time they don't have land rights or tenure. There's a lot of global evidence supporting this and I'll hand over to Marco to take us through that. Yeah, thank you, Alice. Absolutely. So the principle that you just, uh, uh, just mentioned are actually increasingly supported by evidence, by research that shows how women play a fundamental role in uh, whether it is in mitigating and adapting to climate change or uh, dealing with environmental degradation more generally. And uh, whether it is about uh, use of energy or uh, um, management of waste or um, uh, use of other natural resources like fuel wood uh, and, and, and other resources, it, 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 women are, are showing a, a uh, are making a big impact, a big difference in terms of the sustainable use of all these resources. And uh, there is also a, an interesting uh, global study that has put together literature from a number of countries that really highlights a number of key, I would like, uh, underlying behavioral traits of, of human or of, of woman a relationship to the environment, starting from uh, the, the willingness to, to set uh, uh, appropriate strict rules for, for managing these resources and to be much more available uh, uh, to comply with those rules. Also accepting transparency and accountability uh, more, uh, more easily and, uh, and, and having a much better approach to conflict resolution than, uh, than men and, 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 and that both within the community uh, uh, as well as across communities, leading to you know, consistency, unity, cohesion, convergence, which is so important when it comes to sustainable management of natural resources. So it's exciting to see that actually proper research is beginning to document and demonstrate exactly the point that you made earlier. Yes, so when you look at WWFD and then if we look at our work in DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo, a, a, a country that has been ravaged by war and a country where governance is still weak, but you see women are starting to come out and get engaged in committees. Our, we have a program, a re, our program on Red Plus there has women involved in land use planning, in, in producing seedlings for reforestation and agroforestry. And all of a sudden these women are now benefiting from a Red Plus project that is also paying them for their environmental services. Uh, we have examples uh, an example from Honduras here where gender bias well, has, has been a big problem in conservation. Yet the lady in this picture, Gabi, has used her passion for sharks and rays and has determinedly, has really, has remained on course and rec been recognized by her peers by pushing through and doing this research and monitoring. We have um, women rangers in Africa breaking barriers. Um, here's an, a perfect example in uh, Gorongosa in Mozambique. Gorongosa was a, is a national park that was ravaged by war and has right now is recovering. And they, they credit that recovery to uh, 600 female rangers who are working with local communities, improving relationships and ensuring that they resolve the issues of human wildlife conflict that have been there in the past. All of a sudden, where there's 200 elephants, it's already 800 elephants being counted as of today. We have a similar example in Kenya, where women are breaking barriers and are now rangers. These are women, the Maasai, who normally do not go to school. Their, their families do not believe that women should be engaged in, profession, in professionals like this, but all of a sudden they're engaged and their status in society has changed. They have income, they can educate, they, have, they can also educate their brothers and sisters. Um, 
there's an example in Thailand where now there are better career paths for women in natural resource management. Our WWF Thailand office has worked with the university to introduce a smart protected area management program. Adding that curriculum has, encouraged, has empowered women to find jobs and all of a sudden 63% of those trained are finding jobs in the Department of National Wildlife. Um, many and many more examples that we are seeing that where you feel like women are bringing different perspectives into managing natural resources. And in many ways, they show us that the intersectionality matters. And, and in many ways, we are seeing women who are thriving in spite of adversity by uh, intentionally putting in places policies and programming that, that take into consideration gender issues. I'll pass it over to Marco to talk about WWF's commitment. Thank you, Alice. And uh, as WWF, we are committed to total gender balance, in fact, total diversity and respect for diversity and, and inclusion. And, and, uh, and but particularly uh, on, uh, on nature conservation activities on the field, I think these are some, some, some areas, some world streams where we're really, we're really focusing, starting from ensuring gender balance in field collaboration and consultation on the ground with local communities, uh, ensuring gender balance when we uh, uh, generate benefits that can be shared from conservation activities with local communities, uh, gender balance lands used in terms of discussing access to land and natural resources and, and empowering and supporting uh, that to happen uh, in a sustainable way, as well as ensuring gender balance, both in representation in natural resource management nationally or locally, for example, a national park or a national commission on natural resources, but also representation, gender balance is representation when uh, we ourselves uh, run a field project. So uh, the staff that we employ, the, the senior managers, the leaders uh, that lead that particular activity. So this is a, a, these are all areas where we are very committed and, and very focused in, in maintaining uh, a, a strong uh, gender balance uh, everywhere we work. And, uh, and, and finally, just to close, uh, all you heard from Alice in particular, uh, the key principle, but also the evidence and the, and the cases uh, that we presented are all pointing in the direction of the crucial role uh, of gender balance approach to deliver a sustainable future. And I would say gender balance and uh, a, a diversity even more broadly. And I think uh, this is uh, super important as society is resetting our compass for the, the next round of our civilization, the, the, the immediate future of our civilization, about delivering a world in a future that is both carbon neutral uh, in order to tackle climate change, but also nature positive uh, in order to stop losing nature, ecosystems, the ocean, rivers, and biodiversity, and, 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 and forests, and restore as much as we can. So as we move towards a carbon neutral and nature positive future, they're all a woman and in general, a gender balanced approach is, is fundamental. Fundamental to deliver results that increasingly clear are for nature as much as for us, as the nature conservation and human development agenda are converging very strongly. Uh, and as you can see uh, behind, behind my, uh, in the virtual uh, um, uh, screen behind me, this is our last publication, Nature in All Goals, just to stress the fact that at the end of the day, uh, no social development, no human development, no economic development can happen in a degraded planet. And safeguarding healthy nature, natural systems from climate to ocean, forests, rivers, and biodiversity, and so on and so forth, is fundamental to achieve at the Agenda 2030 uh, for us, for our children, and for future generations. And let me just again thank uh, uh, all of you for your invitation and your attention during this presentation. And from Alice and myself, thank you very much. And we like to part company with uh, our favorite slogan in WBF, together possible, together across uh, culture, across country, across gender, and across uh, many other dimensional diversity. So thank you very much.